Hi everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel Dr. Srinivas Medical Concepts and my FE page Dr. Srinivas Concepts. This is Dr. Srinivas Neurologist from Andhra Pradesh, India. I am also the medical author of the book Focused Neurology. Today we are going to talk about a very interesting peculiar cortical innervation of 11th and 7th nerves. The peculiar cortical innervation of 11th and 7th nerves. So let's first see the 11th cranial nerve. The 11th cranial nerve supplies the trapezius and sternocleidomastoid, the spinal accessory nerve. The 11th cranial nerve nucleus has got upper part and the lower part. The upper part is for the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the lower part is for the trapezius muscle. But what is the peculiarity? Generally, the cranial nerves are bilaterally innervated with predominant cortical innervation coming from the opposite cortex. Generally, the cranial nerves, the schema for cranial nerve innervation, that is the supranuclear pathways is bilateral innervation for each cranial nerve nuclei but predominant supply coming from the opposite cortex. But the sternocleidomastoid, though it may be bilaterally innervated, the predominant innervation comes from the same cortex, same side of the cortex. The sternocleidomastoid gets predominant supranuclear cortical innervation from the same side of the cortex. For example, let's see the right side, the right sternocleidomastoid muscle. So the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the nucleus, the 11th nerve nucleus gets innervation from the same side predominantly. We get from the other side, but it is predominantly from the same side. And therefore, when there's a cortical innervation on the right side, the sternocleidomastoid muscle, the nucleus of the sternocleidomastoid muscle gets affected on the same side and it supplies the same side, the sternocleidomastoid muscle and therefore the sternocleidomastoid muscle gets affected on the same side. Very interesting. So when there's a right cortical lesion, the right sternocleidomastoid muscle gets affected. So finally what happens when there is a right sided cortical lesion, the right sternocleidomastoid muscle gets affected. The action of the sternocleidomastoid muscle is to turn the head to the opposite side and therefore when the sternocleidomastoid muscle gets affected on the same side, the opposite sternocleidomastoid muscle will overact and therefore the head will turn towards the side of the lesion, towards the same side of the lesion. So this is the explanation for the head being turned to the same side of the cortical lesion. So when there is a cortical lesion example on the right side, the head also will turn to the same side as that of the cortical lesion. This is the peculiar supranuclear cortical innervation of the sternocleidomastoid. So it is predominantly unilateral. We also have a peculiar innervation of the 7th cranial nerve which has got upper part and the lower part. The upper part has got bilateral innervation like other cranial nerves. But here the peculiarity is that the lower part gets innervation only from the opposite side cortex. And the upper part of the nucleus supplies the upper part of the face and the lower part of the nucleus supplies the lower part of the face. And therefore imagine on the right side if there is a upper motor neuron lesion, a lesion above the nucleus the lower part of the nucleus on the opposite side gets affected. So the lower part of the face gets affected. So in a right UMN lesion, the left lower half gets affected. So the angle of the mouth will deviate to the same side of the lesion. Angle of the mouth will deviate to the normal side. Suppose if it is an LMN lesion like Bell's palsy, both the upper part and the lower part gets affected on the same side. So finally put together what happens when there is a right cortical lesion, the right sternocleidomastoid gets affected. So left sternocleidomastoid will overact. So the head is turned to the same side of the lesion. One. The second point is that frontal eye fields area number eight 
will push the eyes to the opposite side and therefore when the frontal eye field area number 8 gets affected the eyes also will turn towards the side of the lesion so head is turned to the side of the lesion eyes are also turned to the side of the lesion so when there is a cortical lesion and seventh nerve involvement lower half of the face gets affected on the opposite side angle of the mouth will deviate towards the normal side so angle of the mouth also will deviate to the same side that is not that is right side so when there is a right cortical lesion head is turned to the right side eyes are turned to the right side angle of the mouth also is deviated towards the right side and the hemiplegia is on the opposite side because corticospinal tract crosses at the level of the middle oblomata and goes to the opposite side so by just looking at the patient we can tell where the lesion is and explain all the manifestations of the cortical lesion by looking at these signs so when the right cortex gets affected the head is turned to the right side the eyes are turned to the right side the angle of the mouth is need be is deviated to the right side and there is left hemiplegia so if you understand all these basic concepts we can really place the lesion and we enjoy appreciating the clinical manifestations of these disorders i have enjoyed giving this lecture and i hope you have also enjoyed listening to this lecture if you have any suggestions or comments kindly post on to my youtube channel but please like subscribe and comment my youtube channel dr sinwas medical concepts and my fb page dr sinwas concepts thank you bye